it's been joyful all the time because his word has always been alive and his word has blessed us so much so that we were able to con- we were able to overcome every situation any situation that you face today can be overcome and let's keep our focus on the lord and uh, Trust him all the time, not just once in a while, but all the time. Keep our focus on the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the life-giving words that you have for us today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercies which endure forever. We thank you for keeping us in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus, today, Father, you have the words of life, and we shall listen to your word and hear what you have to say, Lord, and be ministered by your word and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we like to go through the scriptures today and one of the things that I see in the scriptures that wherever there was fear and uh, unbelief, it was always brought under control or it was destroyed. And I believe each and every one of us, we need to put down fear and unbelief and crush them under our feet And if you were to take that as a title, you can take that as a title. God wants you to put fear and unbelief under your feet. God wants you to crush fear and unbelief. Because there is so much of unbelief and fear and there is so much of of disharmony around us that we just want to give in to them. We are so tempted to give in to them and we think there is no alternative. You know, the devil just tries every trick he could and he puts us into a box or he puts us into a corner and says, you have no other alternative, you just got to submit to fear and unbelief. But the word of the Lord says, no, you don't have to submit to fear and unbelief. They may be facts, but you overcome facts by the word of God, which is the truth. And, and that's the only way we live the life of Christ. That's the only way we could overcome fear and unbelief, not tolerate fear and unbelief, not just say it's all right, I mean, a little bit of fear, a little bit of faith, let's put both together, I mean, it's healthy, no, it's not healthy at all, it's a little leaven, that leaven of the whole lump, it's always evil that overrules and it just gate crashes into your life and uh, destroys your faith, so why would you want to allow a little of it, it's a little fear that can cause you to be so defeated in life. It's a little unbelief that will cause you to live the, 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 uh, the, uh, the lifeless, faithless life. Jesus crushed faith whenever he, uh, sorry, Jesus crushed fear and unbelief whenever he saw. Even his disciples, he never had mercy on the disciples. When he saw unbelief and fear, he spoke again. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Let's put fear and unbelief under our feet or crush fear and unbelief which destroys the very life of God that is in us. It destroys the very, uh, the goodness that we could enjoy, it destroys. Fear is an enemy. Unbelief is an enemy. It's actually, we rebel against God's word. We rebel against God's word when we, when we hold on to fear and unbelief and try to think, well, it's all right, let me just tolerate. No, God doesn't want you to tolerate fear and unbelief. Right, okay, so we'll start with Ma- Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 and verse number 27. I mean, when the disciples, they faced a situation in the middle of the sea, uh, tossed with waves, verse 24 says, verse 24 says, and the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And on the fourth, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were troubled. They would have never expected a person to walk on water. And they were troubled and thinking that it was a ghost. 
and they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear you know something good comes into your life and you you kind of think ah oh, maybe it's a ghost or maybe it's going to create more havoc in my life but that's not true people of faith they always see things good in their life they can see when good comes but people of unbelief they always see everything as bad everything that they see is always bad for them but god wants you to get a hold of his word and say lord i'm not going to be afraid and jesus spoke unto the disciples and said straight away jesus spake unto him and to them saying be of good cheer or that word cheer also means be of good courage for it is i be not afraid there we see jesus crushed fear he hates for us to walk in fear we find jesus standing against he said be of good cheer be of good courage it is i you know when when jesus says it is i you got to believe anything good can happen in your life because he is the source of all life he is he's a beginner and the finisher of every good thing he's always good he's always good it is i be not afraid always crush fear under your feet or else fear will crush you if you don't crush fear fear is going to destroy your life why would i want to let my enemy crush me when i have authority over my enemy i'm going to stand against my enemy i'm going to stand against fear i'm going to stand against unbelief and i'm going to crush them bring them under my feet that's the heart of god always it has always been jesus destroyed the one who had the power of death and he crushed the head of the serpent and he gave you the victory and gave me the victory don't you ever tolerate fear don't you ever tolerate unbelief and fear and unbelief coupled together is rebelling against god's word god doesn't want us to rebel against his word he wants us to not resist his word but he wants us to receive his word when you receive his word you totally are a, you are submitted to the will of god and when you are submitted to the will of god you know that the will of god is always good and it's not bad and the will of god is that you be blessed beyond measure you be blessed in abundance we don't serve the god of bankruptcy we serve the god of abundance jesus said in john chapter 10 and verse number 10 he said the thief comes to bring bankruptcy into your life by stealing and killing and destroying but i have come to give you life and life in abundance abundance are we going to believe what jesus said or are we going to believe what the circumstances tell us the circumstances have lots of things to tell us but we live not by the circumstances you know it's always easy for us to say how are you doing and well i'm under the circumstances you're not under the circumstances you're supposed to be over the circumstances jesus walked over the circumstances and he wants you to live above and over the circumstances let's go to another scripture quickly and maybe we'll come back to this scripture where we also yeah maybe we'll go to 1 john chapter 5 and verse number 4 1 john chapter 5 and verse number 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world whoever is born of god or whatsoever it says in the king james version that's how it goes is born of god overcomes the world so you are not under the circumstances you are over the circumstances you are always over the circumstances no just don't just give in to the circumstances and say well it's all right i mean after all we're living in this world well if you're living in this world you're supposed to be living a victorious life every area of your life every area of your life you're supposed to be living an overcoming life not just let the devil bother you all the time whenever he feels like see people in the world we find sad they're, they're not living by faith they're living by fear because they don't have the author of faith in living in that inside of them when you receive jesus lord of your life you receive faith into your heart because he is the author and the finisher of your faith 
Faith always is an advancing force that brings you victory. Let faith have its complete work in your life so that it brings victories into your life. Don't interfere with faith. Because if you, if, if you be a spoke in the wheel, you're not going to enjoy the life that faith is going to offer you. Faith is going to offer you all what God has for you. And fear offers you all what the devil has for you. I mean, when you have too much of fear coming into you, eventually you turn out to be a rebel. Where you resist the word of God. Yeah, God said it, but you don't understand me. Yeah, God said it, but you don't understand me. You don't understand my circumstances. God said it, but that's fear. That's rebelling against God's word. God doesn't want us to rebel. You know, the Bible says the rebellion, let me take you to the scriptures from the book of Psalm 68. Psalm chapter 68 and verse number <clears throat> 6. Psalm 68 and verse number 6. We are going to crush fear and unbelief under our feet. That's the heart of God. That's, that's what God wants you to do today. Crush fear and unbelief under your feet. Verse number six says, God sitteth the solitary in families. God sets his beloved or the lonely ones, the only children or the only child. He sets them in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. That's the heart of God. He wants to bring people out of their bindings. But... The rebellious shall dwell. The rebellious dwell in the dry land. The rebellious. The ingredients for rebellion is fear and unbelief. Where you, where you come to the excess of fear and unbelief and eventually you rebel anything good that comes in your way. I can't believe. I can't, I can't imagine something good can turn out from this situation. I just cannot believe, it's impossible. I'm not gonna believe this. That's rebellion and those are the ones that are gonna always remain in a dry land. They're always dry and thirsty and they're always in the dry land. That's like being in hell. Just like the man who, who ended up in hell, the rich man who ended up in hell and he cried out and said, I'm so thirsty, it's a dry place here. Let me have some water. Send Lazarus down and let me have a little bit of a water. Let him tip my tongue with some water. That's the rebellion. That's the place where the rebellious end up in. But God doesn't want you to be in the dry land. There may be dryness all around you, but you are going to be in a flourished place. You're going to flourish in life. Because you choose. It's a matter of choice. Either I can walk in the spirit and live by faith or I can walk by in, in fear and live in unbelief. It's a matter of choice where I make a decision and say, I choose to live by faith. I choose to believe what God said because God only has good for me. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. I don't want to dwell in the dry and the thirsty land. I don't want to always be in a position, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm in a terrible spot. Crush fear and unbelief. Make up your mind that every decision should be walking over fear and unbelief and taking a step of faith. Walking over fear and unbelief and saying, I'm going to take a step of faith. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what people say. I don't care what everybody is going through. It's not that you don't care in that sense. You don't want to. You don't want to tolerate with the people who, you know, people can be like leeches in your life and want you to live in fear and unbelief. I, don't, I hate a leech. I don't want them to hang on me and suck my blood out. There's life in that blood. I don't want my life to get out of me. I don't want anything to come by my way. I want to walk in the land that he has called me to walk in, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. There's an abundance of God's flow in every good thing that he has. There's always an abundance. He doesn't have any lack. And he doesn't want us to walk 
in that fearful state of condition all the time. I mean, even after having everything, we still sometimes live in fear. Job was a man of God. He, he, was, he was somebody who feared God. It says in Job chapter 3 and verse number 23, he was the richest man. But one problem he had, he always thought, I might lose my family. I might lose my uh, business. He was the richest man. The thing that he greatly feared, or the things that he greatly feared, came upon his life. He all came upon his life because he just entertained fear. He entertained to, to disbelieve God's word. See, whatever you entertain is going to eventually destroy your life. Whatever you entertain is going to destroy your life. And when you know that that's what you entertain in your life is not the right thing. Whatever you, you watch, wherever you, wherever you are in, whatever you see or whatever you are viewing on a continual basis and you, you, you sell out to it, you sell yourself into it and say, okay, I'm just sold out to whatever I hear and I see. But why don't we sell our whole our heart out to the word of God and say, God, there is so much of good in the word of God. There's so much of life in the word of God. There's so much of expectancy in God's word. Why would I want to lose out from God and just sell myself over for nothing? And there's a beautiful scripture here and it, it gives us wisdom. In Isaiah 51, uh, yes, in Isaiah 52, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 52, it says like this, Isaiah 52 and verse number three. <clears throat> uh, yeah, actually we should read from one. Let's see. Okay, we'll read three first. For thus said the Lord, you have sold yourself for naught. Said, we sell ourselves for nothing. We don't gain anything also. We sell out ourselves for naught, for nothing, right? And, and continues, and you shall be redeemed without money. That's God's word. Okay, we, we sell out our lives to live with sinful pleasures and giving ourselves to fears and, and uh, heeding to the voice of man and, and listening to the experiences of various people and we we tie ourselves together with it and eventually we are sold for nothing. At the end of everything we find that we have achieved nothing in life that's caused us fear, that's caused us defeat. But God says, I will redeem you without money. I will redeem you and you shall be redeemed or purchased back without money. Now that's what Jesus did on the cross. He hung on the cross and he paid the price for all mankind. He, he paid the price, the highest price that was to redeem us. We were sold out to the devil and we were sold out for nothing. We served the devil, we did everything that we could and whatever he desired, whatever our flesh desired and we gave into it. Into all kinds of habits, we gave into it. Eventually sickness, Disease, poverty, destruction, disorder in our homes. But eventually when we come to Christ, he has redeemed us for no money. He, didn't, he, has, he said, you don't have to pay anything, anything, nothing for salvation. It's free. He freely justifies you and makes you a righteous man. He freely makes you a person, I mean, he says, I don't look at your sin. I don't care what you have done in your past, but I'm willing to purchase you back. I'm willing to redeem you back with you making no payment at all, but just by believing me and putting aside fear. I'm not going to be afraid of anything. I'm just going to let Jesus, he himself can purchase me and make me a new creation. That's what will happen to every one of us who believe in Jesus. We were purchased without any money. But he paid the price. 
He paid the price. He paid the price. What was the price he paid? The blood. His blood and his body was broken. He paid the price so that we can be redeemed with no money, nothing. For salvation, nothing. We never made any payment. It was not our good deeds. Continue. Let's just continue and see some, something concerning where we have come out from. For thus said the Lord God, my people went down a full time unto Egypt to sojourn, sojourn there. And the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Talking about demon spirits that oppress us with no cause. Therefore, and now therefore, what have I here, said the Lord? My people, my people is taken away for naught. And they that rule over them make them to howl, said the Lord. And my name is and my name continually is blaspheming, blasphemed. Well, how do we see the scripture? When we live in fear and unbelief, his name is blasphemed. We children of God, we ought to be walking in the word of God. We ought not to be walking in fear and give ourselves over to the devil. We don't give ourselves over to howling and, and make continually his name being blasphemed. It's not God's will. God wants us to crush fear and unbelief under our feet. Or else you'll be howling all day long and you'll be just taken away for nothing. And you'll be always living in fear. Fear doesn't have, fear has nothing to offer you but destruction. Unbelief has nothing to offer you but to oppose God. And when you oppose God, you're, you're agreeing with all what the enemy does. You're, you're agreeing with everything that the enemy says. The enemy says, you're sick today, you just feel sick today. The enemy says, you're broke today, and then you're broke today. The enemy says, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do something to you, and you, you all, all, I mean, all your life you're going to be afraid. Don't have to just give in to the enemy. Crush the enemy under your feet. And let the devil know that you have a right to live. You don't live by F-A-T-E. You live by faith. See, faith is, is something. What is to happen will happen in your life. But faith changes things. Faith can change things in your life. While faith is only keeping you in a position, what is to happen will happen. See, you can't change your life. You can't change your life. You would say, yeah, I just can't change my life. I just have to live. Everything that has been written in me is already coming to pass in my life. I mean, I, I put everything in order. My, my life was all, from, on the day that I got born, everything that happened, that had to happen to me is already written. But you can change. The Bible says the handwriting of ordinances was taken away, nailing it to the cross. Let me take you to that scripture and show you. From the book of Colossians, turn to the book of Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number, let's see, a couple of verses there, but we're going to see something there. Okay. When we come to Christ, this is what we understand. In verse number 13, or we'll read from verse number 14. Okay, verse number 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that which was decreed, that which was but faith was to take us to. What is to happen will happen to you. You have no way. I mean, it was Jesus dying on the cross, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that which was decreed, canceled out the debt that we had to pay. Fear always makes you pay. Faith redeems you from the payment. 
Fear would want you to pay. You got to pay back. You got to pay back. But the blo- uh, blotting out Jesus dying on the cross. Maybe we'll read from the verse about. No, we'll we'll read that. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away. Uh, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Everything that we had done was nailed to the cross. You may have been a bad person. I was a bad person. You may have been a sinful person. Yes, I have been a sinful person. Every one of us had missed the mark. We didn't have to commit a sin. We were all under sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone, even in our birth, from our birth itself, we were sinful people. We had already broken the transgressions of the law, even in our mother's womb, even before we had committed an act of sin. Even before we had committed an act of sin, we had already been called sinners. What is your background? Sinner. But now I'm a saint. Where were you? You were a slave. And now you're a son. Everything that was against us was nailed to the cross. Everything, it was nailed to the cross so that you don't have to think of paying back. Oh, when am I going to pay him back? Maybe when you're going, you know, Satan just comes over your life and says, you're paying for your sins. You're going through all these difficult times. It is because of your sins that you're paying for. That's the biggest lie that you've ever heard that has come out from the pits of hell. You're not paying for anything. I mean, we are only paying for our ignorance. We pay because we are ignorant that Christ has already paid the price. You are not going through anything because of what you have done. You are not going to reap what, what, what you have sowed in your past. You are going to reap what Jesus has sown for you. Jesus sowed his precious life for you. And he has birthed in you a new life. You're a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. And what payment are you trying to make for your past? When your past has already been everything that was against you, the handwriting of ordinances which was against you was nailed to the cross. Everything that I had done. We need to learn to forgive ourselves and forgive others. We need to learn to receive forgiveness from him first. We need to say, God, I thank you for Jesus who died for me on the cross, forgiving all my sins. None of us can ever say that we were all right from the beginning. We had never made a mistake in our lives. So when the enemy reminds you of your past, You've got to turn around and say, devil, one thing I'm going to tell you, go to the cross. Look at what the cross says. He has redeemed me from the curse. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against me, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And then it says, verse number 15, having spoiled principalities and powers, destroying everything that the enemy or the right that the enemy had over our lives. It says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made them, he made an open show, triumphing them in it. Triumphing over them in it. See, Everybody saw Jesus as a defeat on the cross. Even today, people look at the cross and Jesus hanging there. They, oh, poor Jesus. Oh, I feel so sorry for Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But that, whenever you look at the cross, you can say, God openly showed the whole world that your sins have been paid for and the devil is destroyed. Don't feel sorry for Jesus. Feel sorry for you and make up your mind to follow Jesus all the way through. You can stand on that, around the cross and weep and cry and moan and feel sorry for Jesus, but Jesus looks at you and says, it's ignorance in the highest form. I have openly, God openly showed me to the whole world today. Everybody knows. I mean, if they think of a cross, they would always just think of Jesus or some Christian person. He openly showed 
the destruction of the devil and the payment that is made completely forever concerning your life. The payment is made. The payment is made incomplete and, then it, and you're free. Having spoiled principalities and the works of darkness was destroyed because through death he destroyed the one who had the power of death. That's the reason we have eternal life when we receive Jesus. You live eternally. Oh, we know that this, this, this flesh body, this piece of earth is going to go back to the earth or the dust is going back to the dust. But then you have eternal life which is possessed, which is inside of you. You shall live with him forever and forever and forever. What about right now? You, don't, you mean to say there is no life everlasting here right now? Yes, we do have. Yes, we do have by believing, not by rebelling against God's word. Crush fear and unbelief under your feet by saying, I see Jesus who has spoiled principalities and powers and all the demon powers and openly triumphing over them. Every time you look at, think of the cross or look at the cross, you can say, thank you, Lord. I believe that you have openly showed yourself. It was, in nine, it was so many years ago, 30, 35 years ago, when, when I went into a place like this and I, I, I stood there, I was drunk. But when Jesus appeared to me on the cross, he openly showed me that your, your sins are paid for. Your sins are paid for. And I have destroyed the one who was, who was running your life. If you will only receive me as your Lord and your Savior, I will show you what life means. And that's where the change came in my life. And I've been enjoying since then and I believe every one of us who have received Jesus, Lord of our lives, we have come to the place where we, we can say, yes, Lord, I now see. I understand what it means. Jesus dying on the cross openly, triumphing over them. I'm no longer a defeat. I'm a powerful character. I don't live under the mercy of the circumstances, but I live over the circumstances. Circumstances don't run me. I authorize, I decree my circumstances. I speak over my, I have a right to speak over my, you see, your mouth, your tongue is as a rudder. You can navigate your, your ship wherever you want. The life of your ship is in your tongue. How do you want to run your life? Do you want to speak all, all what everybody says or you want to speak something different to what everybody says? You've got to make up your mind. My tongue is important. My tongue is important to me. I mean, I speak words. Death and life are filled, uh, filled in my tongue. I can speak a deathful word and I can once in a while speak life, but eventually death overtakes Instead, I could say, I have nothing to do with death. I'm going to speak life and life only. I'm going to speak that I'm a blessing. I'm going to say that I'm, my, 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 my life is hid with Christ. I'm going to say I'm the righteousness of God. I have a right standing with God. I, I'm going to say that I'm an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm, I choose to say that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I choose to speak every internal organ in my life is healed. You are made a free moral agent. This was the liberty that you lost in the Garden of Eden. Man lost in the Garden of Eden. But Jesus restored it for us in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the beautiful Garden of every good thing that was there, man lost his freedom. But Jesus won the battle in the garden of Gethsemane and he said, Lord, it's not my will, but your will be done. And he spilt his blood like sweat and he died on the cross for us and that's where the freedom is for us. You have come back to the position where you can use your rights now not to control others, but you can control the evil spirits that are trying to 
come over your life. You can demand and say, devil, you have no right over my life. I crush fear and unbelief under my feet because I got the peace of God. I got the peace of God in me and I'm not going to be afraid of nothing. There is nothing that I got to be afraid of. Nothing on this green earth that I got to be afraid of. Everything that comes with a package of fear. And then we, we open the package and we say, oh my God, I knew this was going to happen. You know why people say, I knew this was going to happen? Because they already have fear in them. I knew this would turn out like this. I knew this would happen because they have premeditated. Not even imagine, not even thinking. They have, they have, they have just put that thinking cap off their lives and, and started just being a slave to the enemy. God has given us a thinking, a thinker. We could think right. We could, he says, I have given you a spirit of self-control. You've got a spirit of self-control. You don't have a spirit where you can be dominated and dictated over because Christ has made you free. That's the reason he says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is something that controls a person's life. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you the spirit of power. He has given you the spirit of love. You can love anybody. It's so easy to love people. When you, when you know that you've got the spirit of love in you, and when you, when you use the spirit of love, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, God has, given, God has not given unto you the spirit of fear which is opposing to love, which opposes power, which opposes a self-controlled mind. You don't give in to fear or you don't just lose out in unbelief. You say, no, I choose to walk in love. I choose to forgive. I choose to forget the past. I choose to walk in the newness of life. That's love. That's love. I choose to forgive them. I choose to forgive those who have wronged me. I, I choose. It's a matter of choice. And, and you have been given the power to choose the right. God says life and death are, are right before you. Blessing and curse are before you. Choose life. Choose life. He's given you a sound mind. And you've got the mind and the capacity just like the way Christ has. You've got the mind of Christ inside, it says. It says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and uh, verse number 16, I believe, the last verse, uh, we'll turn to that scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter, yeah. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have the capacity to walk in this anointing, to walk in, in, the, in the newness of life to the extent that we could think great now. We, can, we have the mind of Christ but we could think big, not think small, not think fearful. Open up yourself and say, yes, Lord, I can think now as Christ thought. Christ has lots of, I mean, he, he, he's... Christ, he was walking in this earth as much as you and I do. But he used his mind so accurately that he was able to discern what God wanted him to do and how the enemy was coming in, how people were trying to trouble him. But he walked in the mind of Christ or he walked in the mind of God. You and I have the mind of Christ. They've been given the spirit of self-control. You have the spirit of self-control. You have the spirit of self-control. You, you can't say, ah, I just, I mean, I have no control over my mind. You're redeemed from that curse. You're redeemed from the curse of being out of control. You can't say, I don't know how to choose no, you've been blessed to choose right. You can choose sickness or health. 
You can choose fear or faith. You can choose poverty or you can choose prosperity. You can choose to give or you can choose to, to be holding on. You can choose, you have the power in you. This is not some kind of a, some kind of a Christian science or this is not some kind of a, a, a positive way of approach. We're talking about the word of God. We're talking Christ. We're talking Christ. We're talking about in Jesus' name. We believe in the power of the, of, of, of the Holy Spirit. We are not talking anything out of scripture. People always say, oh, this must be new age teaching. This is these positive thinkers and these are these people who are coming up with new. No, no, this is Christ's teachings. These are the teachings of Christ. We're talking about the Father who loves us. And some people say, oh, geez, they believe only in Jesus. No, we believe in the Father. We believe in the Son. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We are not, we are not the kind of people. People always have this, you know, they always have, they're so narrow-minded. There's been, I mean, so much of unbelief and fear and, and they've been indoctrinated with things that are contrary to the scripture and they, oh, have mercy on them. Because, because what is most important is for us to understand that God is love. The center of every good thing that we see happening in our life because God is love. And he loves us to the extent that he gave his only begotten son and how much more will he give us if he has given us his son Jesus. Yes, we believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, we believe that the blood of Jesus Christ, that which paid our sins away. Yes, we believe we have been redeemed, we have been purchased, we are purchased from. Yes, we believe that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we believe that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. We're not talking about some other spirit that we are, that's roaming around us and we just catch a few things from here and there. We're talking about the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Who loves us always and he leads us. Sons of God are led by the Holy Spirit. We are sons of God. Children of the Most High God. Crush fear under your feet. Crush fear under your feet. Don't you give in to fear. Fear would call, always cause you to live in, uh, always uh, cause you to live being tormented. But perfect love casts out fear. Let me just close with that scripture. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. This is how our love is made perfect. This is how our love is made perfect. How? How do I know that my love is perfect? If you believe that you're born again and you have Christ living inside of you, you believe that you're saved, you have perfect love. You're not being perfected in love. You have perfect love because you have salvation. You're saved. You're born again. You're a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. You're a new creation. You have perfect love. Don't you ever say, oh, I'm still struggling with this love thing. You're not struggling. You already have perfect love. Love is oozing out of you. Love, all. love compels us to go talk to people about Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Herein is our love made perfect that we have boldness in the day of judgment. We're not afraid of the day of judgment because we have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because you believe that you're saved. You believe that you're saved. The blood of Jesus has washed you and made you a new creation. You are saved. You have perfect love. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We live like Jesus in this world. We live like Jesus in this world. And people turn around and say, you become religious. Oh, you become, you're turned out to be too religious or too spiritual or too up to something. You got to say, yes, I live like Jesus. As he is, so am I. Jesus forgave, I forgive. Jesus walked in love, I walk in love. 
Jesus walks in the power of God, I walk in the power of God. Jesus walked by faith, I walk by faith. Jesus spoke whatever the Father said, I speak everything that the Word says. I live different, I talk different because I have the love of God shed abroad in my heart. By the Holy Ghost, I'm changed. And verse 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. The love that is in you, the perfect love that is in you, casts out fear. It resists fear, it casts out fear. It crushes fear. Because fear has torment, it ruins your life. Fear ruins your life. Even without the action of anything that has happened, you can stay fearful in a, in a comfortable, cushy uh, place. Fear can still destroy you. You can be in a com most comfortable place, but you can be destroyed in your mind. No assurance at all concerning your future. Fear has torment. He that hath fear is not made perfect in love. If you don't have, if you're, if you're living in fear, either you're not saved or you're despising God's word. But the most part of it is people in the world, they are living in fear because Jesus is no longer, or Jesus is not living in their hearts. If you have Jesus living in your heart, then you don't fear. Let's pray and partake in the covenant meal. We have a covenant with Jesus through his blood and his body that was broken for us. It's a covenant. It's an agreement that we have. We talk so bold because we believe in him. We talk so believing because we have boldness in us. We, we, we are not arrogant, but we want to make a difference in our lives plus in whom we live with. It not, it's not arrogance, it is love. Love is bold, love fears not. Perfect love casts out fear. Crush fear and unbelief under your feet. Don't tolerate fear. It's going to crush you in a while. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're going through with some kind of an area in your life, that you are afraid. Today you defeat it. Take the word of God and say, God has not given me a spirit of fear. I know Jesus died for me and all my sins are forgiven. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen to me because of what I have done in the past. Because Jesus paid it all on the cross. I'm free. That's the grace of God. That's pure grace. Is to believe that Jesus died for you and he rose again on the third day. Defeating and destroying fear and unbelief. So that you no longer be a rebel living in the dry land. But you are living in the land of living because of the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your glorious name. Bless your mighty name. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now, I take authority over the spirit of fear. I take authority over the spirit of rebellion. I take authority over the resistance to the love of God. I bind that foul spirit and I cast that spirit out. 
and set your people free, Lord, that they would not resist your word, but respond to your word and receive your word. Lord, I thank you for your people in this place and those who are viewing right now and those who will view later. Let the peace of God come upon their life. And the peace of God shall bruise Satan under their feet. Lord, your word says in Romans 16, 20 that the peace of God shall bruise Satan under my feet. Satan, we know that you're a liar, you're a thief, you're a deceiver. We resist your thoughts. We crush you under our feet as Jesus did on the cross. Every fearful thought, every thought of unbelief, we crush it under our feet and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shall we rise up to our feet and just worship him for a while and thank him for the word Thank him for the promises that we have. Such a good God he is. He's more interested in leading us to enjoy all what he has for us. He leads us through the green pastures. And always goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Don't ever fear that you will fail in life. Don't ever fear that maybe what good thing has happened in my life, I might lose it fast. God wants you to act. Faith acts. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let's praise and worship Him. And... Uh, Prepare ourselves for the common communion, the covenant meal. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing it again. By his word, I have no fear in me. Thank you, God. You're releasing us from fear today, Lord. We praise you, God, that the word has power to break every spirit of fear. In Jesus' name. By his word. Fear in me by his word, death cannot swallow me by his word. I have prosperity by his word, sickness can dwell in me by. Sick 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's make a declaration, each and every one of us. Let's, let's say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for redeeming me from the curse of the law. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And you were manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I receive Jesus into my life. And I believe that he is Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for crushing fear and unbelief in my life. I thank you, Lord, that you rose again and gave me a new life. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's partake together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be free. Be free. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. No sickness has authority over your life. You are free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. All your internal organs are being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We partake in this covenant meal, not as a religious act, but we believe, we have faith in the blood and the broken body of Jesus that took the curse upon himself and released the blessing into our lives because we believe in Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Oh, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. You enjoy healing. Let there be healing manifested in your life. Thank you, Lord. We praise your glorious name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's honor him and bring our tithes and our offerings unto him as the Holy Spirit is impressed in your heart. Do what the Spirit says as you purpose in your heart. One thing is you can purpose in your heart. And the other thing is you can be led by the Holy Spirit. But whatever you do, you do it to the kingdom of God. And as we give, it shall be given unto us. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. So let's honor him and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can use an envelope if it is a tithe or as an offering, you can bring it down. Just a few announcements to announce a few books that we have in our bookstore. One is God's Word for Daily Thank Confession. You. This is a good book. This has uh, many promises that you can stand and especially on healing there are many scriptures you can stand on and also about your authority your victory on the blood there are so many scriptures it's a good book and it has also an mp3 you can listen to it day and night and you can say god i thank you for your word because god's word always brings victory and also another book by Albert Willis, Victory Over the Impossible. If you have seen some things that you have not had got victory, it's a good book. You can say, God, I thank you. I just looked through this book and it has uh, one of the chapters is confess God will for you. God will do this for me. God will do this for me. Many times we think, you know, I don't know whether God will do this for me. But, you know, God's word is so positive you, and it is the truth. God always wants the best for you. And also another book by Albert Willis, Overcoming Worry. And many people, they keep worrying and worrying and worrying. It's a good book where you can read and be set free. And also a good book, God's Plan of Salvation. This has the basic uh, truth that you need to know how to be established in your faith. And it is like, you know, where you begin to learn A, B, C, D. So this is just the beginning of your uh, faith journey where you can know God wants me to live by faith. So God's plan of salvation. And also you can hear from God. Many people, they say, I don't hear from God. I don't know what God's voice is like. But God says that you are his sheep and he's your shepherd. He will lead you and guide you. You can hear God's voice. So you can be established by uh, 
reading that book and know the truth and also power prayers and promises for children little children have been blessed by this book they have understood how to pray scriptures and uh, some of them we have taught them you can make your own prayer you know take god's word and pray it and it can become a promise to you so it's a good book where you can even take and give a gift to somebody hallelujah let's worship amen let's sing it one more time psalm 23:6 as we leave this place goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life that's what we're believing for and that's what we're going to see let's praise the lord
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. We praise you. Father, we thank and praise you for each and every one of us here right now. We thank you for your grace and your love. And Father, we believe that your goodness and your mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, according to Psalm 23 and verse number 6, you said it to us, O God. So, Lord, I pray for each and every person according to your word, O Father. Even as they have honored you with their tithes and their offerings, O God, you said, Given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men shall give unto their bosom, that they'll have always enough and more to give to every good work, O God. I pray your grace continue in their lives, even as they have brought their tithes and their offerings cheerfully unto you. You bless them, O Father. Your word says that the windows of heavens are open for them, O oh Father, even in, a, in the famine, Lord, that you will bring them a harvest into their lives, O oh God. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that they would lack nothing in their lives, that they would always be sufficient in all sufficiency, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have opened up the windows of heavens for them to be blessed beyond measure, Lord. You honor them in their workplaces, O oh God. In whatever they are in, O oh Father, amongst their neighborhood, that your blessing is going to continue. And Father, we also believe that you have healed all these dear ones for them to walk in divine health. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And we will also continue maybe next Sunday also uh, having three services. Let's see how things go and we will keep you informed. God bless you.